Hey, welcome to the channel. We hope that you enjoy today's stories and check out the chapters on the video to see all the stories for today. But before we get into this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when we release a new video. So let's get into the video. I will never forget the room at the end of the hallway. I, a 21-year-old male, had lived with my grandmother at the age of seven, my grandma lived in an old two-story house and did foster care. On the second floor, there was this room that would always give me an uneasy feeling as a kid, even to this day just thinking about it. It'd be nights I'd have to sleep in that room and I would constantly have nightmares over and over. One I specifically remember started with me being in that room and the air vent had broken open and thousands of spiders started to swarm the room. I personally have a thing with spiders, they creep me out. One night all the foster girls in the house had left to some event they had and I had gotten in trouble so my grandma made me stand by the front door in the dark and I noticed someone was standing at the top of the staircase looking down at me, all I could see was a dark figure of a girl. There weren't any distinct features I could make out besides it being a girl, so when my grandma wasn't looking, I decided to sneak up the stairs thinking maybe it was one of the girls but I remembered they were all gone. When I had got to the top of the stairs I saw her walk into the room at the end of the hall and my heart stopped and nothing but fear ran over my body then I ran back downstairs. For a few hours, I tried to convince myself that maybe one of the girls had stayed back until their event was over, and they all came home. I realized who or what I saw wasn't them. My father warned me about the voices. This is long but is really a true story. I was kicked out of my mother's house at 18 and went to live with my uncle and father in Selma, Alabama. It was an old house that belonged to my grandmother before she passed. My folks used to tell me stories when I was younger about the house, saying it was haunted and was once a slave house. Selma has a history of slavery and even was once called a slave city, so I believed the stories. There was even a rumor that a witch lived in the house before my grandmother. It's also rumored that my grandmother's brother even dated a woman who was said to be a witch, and she put candles around the doorsteps with a chicken with its head cut off in the middle. I've had family members tell me their stories of seeing and hearing paranormal activity around the house, but at this point, I had never witnessed anything, so I thought they were all just superstitious and paranoid. After a while, I move into my father's old room, and he warns me that one day I'll start hearing voices. I had a dog at the time, and he even warned me that one day soon my dog would die. His exact words were more cryptic than that though. He said, They'll either kill you or the dog. I laughed, thinking he was joking. He told me that my aunt was secretly a witch and that I couldn't trust my uncle. He also told me that if something starts calling for me to come outside the room at strange times, it's not real. I laughed at him even more then because I remembered other family members saying he was crazy and talked to himself sometimes. Despite his claims, everything seemed okay for a while. One day, I was preparing to leave Selma for a job interview in Montgomery. My aunt saw me dressed up and asked where I was headed. I told my aunt, who was living there at the time too, that I was going to take a nap and was heading to Montgomery afterwards for a job interview. Hours later, I walked out of the house to find that my front tire was slashed. All of a sudden, my aunt appeared out of nowhere and asked what happened. This was strange to me. She was acting unusual, but I didn't question it. Luckily, I had a spare in the back of my Jeep. I fed my dog and left for Montgomery. It was dark when I came back to Selma hours later. My uncle said that my dog was dead and he didn't know what happened to it and that they had already buried him too. I felt some type of way about my dog mysteriously dying. So, I asked my aunt's kids who were always outside playing what happened, and one of the kids told me that they beat the dog and kicked it in the nuts until it stopped moving. I had never heard this child talk like this, and he was serious about it. Didn't blink or laugh while saying this. At this point, I knew something was wrong with my folks. My father randomly came over to the house the next day. Before I could say anything about the dog, he said, I told you they were going to kill it. 
He also said that he saw my uncle talking to some Mexicans who were known for doing voodoo when he passed by late last night. Again, I laughed it off because my father was always a joker. But deep inside, I was very worried. The next day, as soon as I woke up, I had this weird, unrealistic feeling. Then I heard my father call my name from outside the house. He called me by a nickname that he used to call me as a kid when we first lived in my grandmother's house. I was about to go out when I remembered what he said. If something starts calling for you to come outside the room at strange times, it's not real. I paused for a few seconds, then swung the door open. No one was there. It was very early in the morning. My father was more than likely at work. Two days later, I woke up at 3 a.m. Walked outside the house because I felt weird. As I walked around the outside of the house, I heard sounds like birds swooping over my head. When I looked up, I saw nothing but black shadows flying everywhere. I looked to the sky, and the moon was so close to the earth that it might as well be a giant eyeball staring right at me. A few days after that, the people from the job interview called back and said I got the job. I was supposed to start next week. Later that night, I felt a presence in the room with me as I tried to sleep. It felt negative, so I put my headphones in and played some positive music. Even with the music playing, the presence felt like it was getting stronger and stronger. Somehow, my left earbud fell out of my ear and I heard a dog slash wolf growling in the room. I could even feel the vibration of the growling. Later in the week, I was preparing to leave the house so I could live with family in Montgomery for the job. I had gathered all my things and was ready to go. I sat back on the bed to get a short rest before I hit the road. All of a sudden, it sounded like something was running up to the side of the bed and then grabbed my hair and yanked it. The force literally almost pulled me off the side of the bed. I left at that moment and have never been back since. If you're enjoying today's video, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos and interesting stories. Now let's get back to the stories of our lives. The Biltmore Hotel Me, a 17-year-old female, and my best friend, a 16-year-old female, took a trip to the Biltmore Hotel in Florida after watching a Sam and Colby video on it. We obviously couldn't afford the room they stayed in presidential suit, so we got a known haunted room. We packed away our belongings and began to set up for a seance. We lit candles, introduced ourselves, and then called out to any entity that could be with us. Hello spirits, we come in here with full respect and come not to harm but to investigate. If there is anyone here with us, could you give us a clear sign of your presence? Around 15 seconds after we heard a knock on the wall opposite us. We passed this as it could have been the people staying in the room next to us as we were in a well-known hotel. We call out again and ask if that was someone or something trying to communicate with us. Following this came two knocks from the same wall. Not knowing if this was a coincidence, we brought out a piece of ghost hunting equipment called a spirit box. We connected this to a soundproof pair of headphones and my best friend put them on, she closed her eyes and relaxed so that we could begin to do the Estes method. She was down under, and I began to ask questions about anything that could be here with us. Is there anything here with us? I say. My best friend called out. It's me. There was no way she could hear my question being asked. I took a leap and asked. Who is here with us? My best friend then called out. Devil and malicious. I tapped my friend to stop the session as this spooked me. And the wardrobe door to the side of us flung open and a white robe fell off the hanger. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and check out more videos from the channel.